We're in Sublime Tech's four mode here on the channel. Believe me, we have a ton of things to talk about before we're finished covering all of the great new features that have been added in this version of Sublime Text. But I thought today, let's take a quick jump into something that has been asked for quite a few times over the years that I've been using Sublime Text that is now possible thanks to some new features that were added in these recent builds. And that is the ability to take a key binding, put it inside of a project file, and have it apply to just that project. Intrigued? Keep watching. Hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odan Nerds here. Welcome to this week's video where we're talking about creating key bindings in Sublime Text that are specific to particular projects. This is something that I've seen people ask for quite a few times over the years that I've been using Sublime Text. And now with Sublime Text 4, it's actually possible to do that very thing with the help of a third party package, which it just so happens I happen to be talking about today. I created this package and I created it in one of the live streams that I do weekly here on YouTube. It's a great opportunity to hang out with me, other members of the Sublime Text community. We chat, we relax, we have a good time, share stories and work on packages and plugins in Sublime Text. If that's the sort of thing that interests you, check out the information down in the description below. Before we get into the rest of the topic of the video though, question of the day. How many key bindings do you have in Sublime Text? Just a few. Have you really customized it and made it your own? Are you trying to make Sublime Text key bindings behave like some other software? Let me know down in the comment section below. In order to use the package that we're going to be showcasing here, you need to be using a build of Sublime Text that is build 4050 or greater. That is Sublime Text 4. This won't work with Sublime Text 3. The package isn't compatible with it. Something like this is technically possible in Sublime Text 3, but it requires a lot of manual intervention, whereas this package can do it in a more automated, seamless manner. So that's not really a great solution if you're a Sublime Text 3 user, but if you're interested in that, let me know down in the comments section below. And uh, also this package, as of the recording, I'm doing right now hasn't been officially released on package control just yet depending on when you're watching this it may be released so in the next part of the video where we talk about installing and using this package try that first if it doesn't work then the reason for that is that it hasn't been officially released yet no worries you can still use this package today right now in sublime text 4 all you got to do is go to the command palette choose the uh, package control add repository command. It's going to open a panel down at the bottom of the window and you need to enter this repository URL. You don't need to transcribe this. There's a link to it down in the description of the video. Hit enter and then package control will know that it can look in this location along with the default locations for packages. You'll be good to go to install it. As a side benefit of this, uh, doing this also gains you access to my snappy and hyper help packages for displaying the API documentation and other Sublime Text documentation in a hyperlinked help system directly inside of Sublime Text. And if you're unfamiliar with those, check down in the description of the video for links to videos that talk about those very things. And uh, while you're going down there, perhaps you want to use the buttons to thumb subscribe and share and ring the bell notification icon so you don't miss out on other great video content just like this. Now, of course, to get started, we actually have to install the package. We can do that by package controls install package command from the command palette. After the list of packages is fully downloaded, this will give you a list of all packages known to package control that aren't already installed that are compatible with your version of Sublime Text. Remember, you need Sublime Text 4 in order to use this particular package. All you got to do is search to find the name of the package, which is Project Specific Keys. Hit enter and it will install. It's a very small package. It installs very, very quickly. And the first thing we see is this install message displayed by package control to give us a little bit of information about this package and what it's for. One of the informational items in here is uh, the name of a command you can run in the command palette in order to look at the documentation for this. And this is going to give you all the information you need to actually get the most out of this particular package. Remember, this is still under active development. So as things proceed, this could get even more powerful. You're going to want to make sure you come back and look at this from time to time whenever the package updates to see what else is available. Now, I would urge you to actually go through this documentation and see exactly uh, how it is that this package works and how to get the most out of it. We're just going to show you a demonstration here to get you started. So this is very much a do as I say and not uh, do as I do. But one thing we can see here is an example of a project file that contains a key binding file. So we can see a little bit about what we're going to be getting ourselves into. And we can see this is a key binding just like any other key binding you might see in any sort of key binding file. But it's here inside of a project. And it's here inside of this specific key that uh, support is added for this key via the package that we're using right here. So the very first time you use this inside of a project, remember, you have to add this key in. Make sure you add it with square brackets because it's a list of things and uh, you will be good to go. 
Now, in order to demonstrate this, we have two windows here open side by side. The window on the left has the project associated with it, and the window on the right, just a plain empty window. And uh, what you're going to need to do, of course, is edit the Sublime project file that you're using to add in the key bindings. And there's a few different ways you can do that. Uh, from just the regular menu, you can use the project edit project menu command. This is also available under the command palette as well. These commands will only be available in a window that contains a project. And choosing it will open the Sublime project file inside of the window, uh, ready for you to be able to make any changes you like to it. That's not what we're going to do here, though, because this package actually adds uh, a menu item and command palette entry for editing project-specific key bindings in a way that might be more familiar. And we're going to look in the preferences menu for this and it's way down at the bottom and it is project specific key bindings. Now this is, will only be uh, enabled for windows that actually have a project and choosing it does something that's probably quite familiar because it opens up a window split with the default key bindings for your platform on the left and your project open on the right ready for you to add key bindings to it because you may want to base your key bindings on one of the defaults and modify how they behave inside of this project. Now remember the very first time you do this you need to add the appropriate key to your project uh, to store the key bindings because this isn't something that Sublime does by default so the project won't have this key unless you add it and remember it has to be added with square brackets because it's a list of things but after that you can put any key bindings inside of this that you might like and they will be active only inside of windows that have this project loaded for demonstration purposes we're just going to use the echo command this is one that comes up uh, with Sublime text and all it does is display its arguments to the console which uh, is a great way to figure out if your key bindings are doing what you want we could Cover that in the video on key bindings and key binding context, which I've linked down in the description below if you'd like to know more information about setting up your own key bindings. And uh, we just have a simple thing here. Now, all we have to do is save the project and the key bindings immediately become active, just like they would be for any other key binding file. Now, all we have to do is go into the Sublime Text console, which we can do via the menu item of View Show Console or the associated key binding of Control Backtick. And when I press the key, we can see that uh, the echo command is executing and this key is actually doing what we set it up to do up there in the window. However, if we were to jump over to the right-hand window, open its console, when I press the key binding in here, it doesn't do anything because this key binding is specific to the other window and the project that it's loaded in. Now, when you edit key bindings normally, you edit a file that has either Windows, Linux, or OS X inside of its file name to make those key bindings specific to that particular platform. And that's because different operating systems have different conventions of over what keys are used to carry out what actions. For example, Linux and Windows use control for some key bindings that Mac OS would use command for instead. And as a result, because Sublime works across multiple operating systems, many people use Sublime over multiple operating systems, such as myself and it's very common to want to synchronize your settings across all of the machines you use Sublime on so that it stays configured identically. You want to make sure that the key bindings you use are specific to the platform on which you are currently working. Now, this package does the exact same thing, but it does it in a slightly different way. And it actually does it in a way very similar to how menu items and command palette entries can be made platform specific, which is, if you're unfamiliar with it, something we're going to be covering at some point in Plugin 101, the video course teaching you how to become a package and plug Again, author in Sublime Text, which is linked down in the description below. And all we have to do is add a key named platform to any key binding. Now, if this key isn't present, then this key binding is assumed to work over every platform. And no matter what prod, whatever platform you work in this project in, that key binding will be made available. But you can add this platform key and add uh, one of six possible values to it. First of all, you could use one of the three platform names, which is Windows, Linux, or OS X, and case is important here just as it is in the name of the file so make sure you do it exactly as is seen here and this will make this particular key binding that this key is applied to specific only to that particular operating system so for example by adding it here we can say that this key binding applies only to windows because that is what we have put in here what you can also do is use those same three values but put an exclamation point in front of them to mean not this platform so for example we could add a 
another key binding down here on a completely different key that also uses the echo command. And in this one, we use the platform key, but we specify not Windows, which means that this key binding would be active on Linux or on Mac OS, but not here on Windows. And again, all we have to do is save this file. And if we go into the console, pressing the first key works because this is Windows and we specifically told it that this key binding should be active on Windows. But the second key when we press it does nothing because this is not the right operating system for that one. Now, there's a lot of functionality to be had here. And if we were to look at the source code for this package, it's less than 200 lines of code, including the comments that explain how different parts of it work. Now, remember, we implemented this on one of my weekly Sublime Text live streams, which are a great opportunity to hang out with me, the community at large, chat, have a good time, ask questions, and develop cool packages just like this. You can use the information on the screen right now to join in on one of those if you'd like. And you can use the buttons down below my head to thumb subscribe and share and ring the bell notification icon if you don't want to miss out on any of the great content that we put out on a weekly basis here on this channel. And until the next one, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.